Okay, MEGN300, let's take a look at how uh, your power supply works and how we can set that up in the lab. So this is the power supply that you'll find when you come to your bench uh, here in CTLM123. We have a few different models in the lab. They all work the same. They might look slightly different than this, uh, but the general controls are all going to be the same. Right? So when you come here, we've, what we've got is we have three channel power supplies. So we have two channels where we can adjust the voltage and the current limits on. So that's channels A and B here. And we notice we have two terminals for each of those so we can make a complete circuit. And then we have a fixed five volt circuit right here. So that channel will always supply five volts and it will supply up to four amps, which is more current than the other two channels will supply. So if you have a higher powered device, you can supply it with five volts there, right? And uh, we can set the voltage that these channels are set to using the knobs over here. And we can adjust how much current those will provide also using these knobs down here. So let's go ahead and turn this on and we'll watch how this works. So when we power it up, the display should turn on. And right now we are looking at the voltage and current readings for channel A. So we can switch and show which channel is, uh, is visible on the display here with this switch in the center. So if we want to see what channel B is supplying, we can flip the switch there. Let's go back to A. And right now we can see that A is supplying about five volts and we have an open circuit. So we are drawing zero milliamps, which makes sense because there's an open circuit. There should be no uh, current flowing. Okay, we can go ahead and adjust that voltage with the A knob here. So if I were to change that, I can change how much voltage is being supplied. Let's set it back to five volts and let's connect this to something so that some current will actually start flowing. So here on my breadboard, I just have a one kilo ohm resistor plugged into the breadboard. I'm going to use some leads to connect that to the power supply. So to connect to channel A, we're going to use the A terminals here. So we need a positive we'll connect that to our resistor and we need a negative so that our current has a return path to make it back into the power supply. So here's what my breadboard looks like now. So I've just clipped onto the, the two ends of the resistor. And you can see we have, we're supplying five volts. And now we're measuring that there's five milliamps of current flowing through uh, the circuit, which is what you would expect from Ohm's law. Now we can limit the amount of current that this power supply will provide using the current limiting knob down here at the bottom. So watch what happens as I turn this down. You notice that it supplies that five milliamps until I turn the limit down to low and we get this constant current light turn, turning on and you notice our voltage is way lower now also. So essentially what I've done here is I've limited the current so we, can, we can't have a full five milliamps um, flowing through the resistor and the resistor is trying to draw too much current for this current setting. So our voltage has to drop to accommodate the, the current limit that I've set. Um, this is a pretty common mistake to run into into the lab is if your current is set too low, you can't get any voltage out of uh, your power supply. The, the voltage is really, really low as compared to what it's supposed to be. And so you'll have this light turn on. If you're getting readings where you're not seeing the voltage that you expect, Check those lights and make sure they're not turned on. If they are turned on, the fix is you just have to turn up the current limit. So just turn that knob up so until the light turns off and now we're getting the voltage that we would expect again. Another common thing that we can have happen here is you'll notice there's also this ground terminal over here on the far left. That is earth ground. So that's connecting to the, the building's uh, ground circuit out of the wall outlet. And it does not make a complete circuit with uh, the channel on the power supply. So if I take this negative terminal here and connect it over there, you'll notice that no current is flowing whatsoever. That's because I don't actually have a complete circuit when I'm using this terminal here. So remember, if you're building your circuit, you're always using the black and the red terminals 
We typically don't need to use that green one. It can sometimes help with noise. If you have a very noisy circuit, you can plug uh, a cable going from the ground to the negative terminal here. So the negative terminal is also connected to ground and that can help clear up some noise. But the times where you need to do that, it's pretty rare, right? So most of the time you're gonna, your setup is gonna look something like this when you're powering a circuit. And that is how your uh, DC power supply works.